Um, for our next speaker, Adinda van Veli, ladies and gentlemen, she sees herself as an art consultant, doing a broad range of work in the industry of art and culture. Uh, she organizes exhibitions, creates fundraising for cultural initiatives, and does the PR and marketing for the Center of Architecture in Amersfoort. Adinda will talk about how small techniques she frequently uses to look at art can also be used on a day-to-day -day basis on a social level. Ladies and gentlemen, Adinda van Veli on the art of looking twice. I've been standing on the stage for about 15 seconds. Within the first 0.4, each and every one of you will have formed an opinion about me on this first impression. Don't worry about it though, it's just basic biology, I don't blame you. But still, 0.4 seconds is quite quick. I believe this also happens when you look at a painting. And as an art consultant, the last three years, I have seen a lot of paintings, trust me. And I'm the first to admit that I don't like or fall in love with each and every one of them when I see them for the first time. But as a professional, you should acknowledge each and every painting. And I've noticed that I always use three questions to give each painting a second impression. The first is, what is it that I see? The second, which techniques are used? And the third, which or what story is being told? Let me illustrate it to you. This is a painting by Julia Lama. It was painted in 1730, female painter, which I love. What is it that we see? We see two figures, one larger than the other, one is adult, holding an infant child, might be his own, might not be his own. They are outside. In the background, we see a landscape with rocks and trees. Hopefully for them, it's quite a warm climate since it's, you know, kind of cold if you're nude or practically nude. But we don't know what they're doing. We don't see the face of the man or the face of the child. We have no idea what kind of activity they're doing. Now, which techniques did Julia Lama use? The colors that she uses are very warm, very much to make us feel good about this painting. A lot of yellow, a lot of brown, a little bit of blue in the sky, but overall a pretty picture. But what's the story? What if I told you that the title of this painting is Saturn devouring his son. The verb to devour means to eat. Saturn and this story are a part of Greek mythology and I think we all know that the Greeks could kind of be dramatic. And <laughs> Saturn at a certain point went to an oracle. Saturn was a man that was feared by everyone in the land that he ruled, and he absolutely loved it. And he went to the oracle, kind of confidently, and said, hey, oracle, is there ever going to be a moment where I lose this power that I have, this fear that everyone feels for me? And the oracle said, well, Saturn, there is, because one of your children is going to murder you. Now remember, this is Greek mythology. Saturn decided not just to murder his children, but to eat them. This is a moment where Saturn is taking a bite out of his baby. Does this change your opinion about the painting? I hope it does. Now, Julia Lama wasn't the only painter that decided to depict this story. About 100 years later, there's this amazing painter called Francisco Goya, who did the same, but quite differently. 
It's kind of creepy, isn't it? It should. Now, what do we see? Again, we see two figures, one much larger than the other one. The person he's holding, the larger one is Saturn, by the way. The person he's holding is his child, again. But this time, the body is adult. Kind of strange. We don't see a background because Goya decided that this wasn't important for the story. Everything happens in the foreground. And at this moment in the, the story, he has already taken a bite out of his child since the body is clearly beheaded. Now, which techniques did Goya use? Unlike the other painting that was very warm and had beautiful colors like browns and reds, Goya chose to use very dark colors. Do you see the difference? Goya decided to make us feel kind of eerie about this painting immediately. And there's this trick that painters use, the contrast between dark and light. If a painting has a couple of lighter subjects, the painter wants us to see those first. In this case, the body and the eyes. Now, what's the story that Goya is trying to tell us? We know about Saturn being a terrifying man and, let's face it, a horrible father. But the biggest difference between this painting and the, the other one is the fact that we can see the face of Saturn. We can see his eyes. But we can also see the emotion in his eyes. These aren't just the eyes of a man that's afraid of losing his identity. These are the eyes filled with despair because Goya chose to show us the moment that Saturn discovers that he is a monster, that he is doing something that's absolutely unforgivable. Does this change your opinion about this painting? I hope it does. Now, why am I telling you this story? A couple of years ago, I learned a beautiful word in the English language. It was the word sonder, S-O-N-D-R. And sonder means the overwhelming feeling that you get when you figure out that each and every person around you has a life as complex as your own. Mind-blowing for me, because these three questions that I use in my professional life to get a second impression of people, sorry, of paintings, I didn't use in my social life. Often you come across people that might not be your people. You're like, oh, they're cool. I don't need to be friends with you because you're not my kind of type of person, which is fine. But I discovered that if you use these three questions, you might be able to surprise yourself. Look at me, for instance. What do you see? You see a young woman on stage, 25-ish, Asian, perhaps. I'm standing tall, probably confident. You might mistake it for arrogance, perhaps. What am I using? What kind of techniques am I using to give you this first impression? I have my hair up. I'm wearing a blue jumpsuit, I'm wearing heels. My shoulders are back. But what's the story behind these shoulders? The shoulders are straight because I did classical ballet for three years when I was a child. But I also played football or soccer. I used to have beautiful ankles. They're completely ruined now. I play a blue ukulele, which I love. Just had three lessons, but still I feel like George Harrison. When I'm drunk, I dance like Beyonce. Often I hit people in the face, and sorry about that. <laughs> but I'm also the kind of person that wakes up in the morning afraid that I won't be impressive for 15-year-old me. Because 15-year-old Adinda thought that she could take over the world. Does that feel confident? Perhaps not. I want to invite you all, the next time that you meet someone that's unimpressive to you at first, to use these questions, because truly, you are surrounded by amazing people. Thank you.